Today I want to talk about plumbing. Did I do that good? That's pretty good. Should I do it again? I don't know if the neighbors heard you. I'll spare them. Okay. <laughs> Wait, the neighbors? Yeah. Hey neighbors! <laughs> I wonder if it works that good if I turn it off. Hmm. Are you trying to call the aliens and <laughs> burp, burp, burp. <laughs> Wait, let's put that clip in there so they know what we're talking about. Totally. Otherwise, they'll think we're crazy. Totally. Wait, I think they'll I... be coming anytime now. Today, I think we're gonna talk about plumbing. It's something that's been on our mind because spring is sort of here. It's thinking about showing up, and that means that our plumbing project needs to resume. We actually covered a lot of ground with plumbing, but we didn't share a whole heck of a lot of it with you folks. And part of the reason we haven't talked about it since then is it's all covered in snow. Does Bugaboo have anything that he wants to talk about? Oh, he's pretty talkative. Does he have any plumbing talk? Or is it know. mostly just... I think he's... Look at the sun like radiating on his bangle fur. Oh. Surprised he's not melting in the cabin. Mm, he's so warm. Before the snows came, and as that plumbing project came to a screeching halt because of the freezing weather, we kind of pushed everything back away from the uh, accessible areas because we, we wanted to be ready in case there was a uh, heavy snow year. And there was. So a lot of our plumbing ended up getting buried either by the snow plow or by heavy snowfall or both. So I'm thinking the best thing to share first is probably the schematic. So you can kind of see the thinking behind the plumbing on this project. And I'll kind of share with you some of the things we learned as we went through the designing process. Can anybody even read that? Yeah, looks legible. So to kind of help us understand the components that we needed, we kind of just drew this really rough upper schematic. So this is the upper part of our plumbing system. It doesn't represent the whole system because it's really split into two major components with nothing but pipe down here just connecting the two. So first we started out with one tank and as a consequence of some other things we ended up with two. So up here we actually are going to be creating a series system and we're actually going to connect to tanks at the bottom through a couple of bulkheads and then at the top through bulkheads too. This will allow air to pass between the two and this one will allow water. So we actually effectively end up with a tank twice as big. Over here at the outlet, that's where things really start getting complicated. If you haven't watched our other video, we mentioned a book about water storage that talks a lot about making sure that you have the right placement and sizing of your outlet. If you size it too small, you'll get a lot of turbulence right here at the bottom of the tank and it stirs up any sediment. And you guessed it, it ends up in your drinking water. Up here, a little more simple, this is where our fill lines are going to go. We only need one fill line because the tanks will equalize on their own. We also need an overflow and that overflow is designed to keep the, the tanks from uh, bur bursting or bulging out the lids. So our overflow is here, just below our fill line. Making a very basic pencil schematic was really helpful for us. You can see that we made lots of adjustments to this, made some erase marks and fixed things. So if you can make this in pencil. Don't be fooled, this is probably revision 10. <laughs> Yeah. We had a lot more chicken scratch, but we won't bore you with it. Yeah, we went through this a lot of times. <laughs> and you'll see some curly cues up here. Those curly cues are actually um, water lines that we plan on placing for future use because we want to do some rainwater harvesting. We're not going to use those right away, but we're going to lay those lines and just terminate them at the top. Yeah. <laughs> schematic, 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 schematic. Okay, here we go. This one. Okay, and this schematic is actually near the bottom of our property where our house is going to go. You see the same curly cues? Those are just terminations for a future rainwater harvesting system. We're going to bring our main drain line down and our fill line up from a box that we're going to use to terminate all of those connections. And then to minimize the number of times that we're going to connect to the main line, we're only going to bring a couple of lines off of the main. One will come over here to our RV and the other out here to our garden. Uh, we've talked about bringing a connection up here to the hot tub deck just so we've got a spigot up there. So we've got that planned. We'll kind of see how that transpires. And ultimately we're going to cap our main line down here because down, down the road we're going to connect it to the house which is going to end up over here. One lesson I can share for sure when planning a plumbing system is that you're very likely to overcomplicate it. There's so many options out there that it's easy to go hog wild with 
Um, the number of pipes, the number of lines, the number of connections, you're just gonna run water everywhere. And I think if you really spend some time with the schematic, you can simplify it down to where you have the minimal amount of connections and the minimal amount of lines. That's gonna help you with longevity and it's also gonna reduce the cost. It kind of goes without saying, but keeping the system simple is probably the hardest thing to do because when it comes to plumbing, you have every conceivable pipe size, half inch, three quarter, one, one and a quarter, inch and a half, two, two and a half, three, and, and all these pipe sizes to a, to a homeowner, it doesn't really make sense why you would use one over another. So sizing will be your next big challenge. A part of the sizing conversation is actually material choice. Uh, there's certainly different options for plumbing. Probably one of the most common options is PVC, which is readily available and it's affordable, but as you probably already know, PVC comes in very distinct links, which means you have a phenomenal number of connections, which isn't terrible, but the more connections, the more risk. <laughs> Every time he twitches, he sinks. It's really easy to have five different sizes of pipe in your system. And for us, simplifying the sizing simplifies the material. That led us to choosing our material. We decided to go with poly, poly pipe. It's a very common plumbing material, but the thing is, it gets really confusing. Unlike PVC, which has less available types of PVC, poly, there's poly for everything from a sprinkler system all the way up to a gas line. As if choosing the sizing wasn't bad enough, there is multiple different sizes when you get into poly pipe. This is iron pipe size two inch. I believe the other one is copper pipe size or CPS. That matters when it comes to fittings. It's going to determine the inside diameter and the outside diameter. When we worked really hard on simplifying our schematic, we got our plumbing down to two pipe sizes. This main line, which is our drain line, coming down from the cisterns to all the junctions is two inch. We wanna be able to drain our cisterns really fast for two reasons. One, for fire. If we need to empty our cisterns to fight fire, we'll do it. The other reason is we want to maybe be able to clean them out and you want really high flow to be able to flush all the sediment out of the bottom of those tanks. And the other size is three quarter. Three quarter will be our fill line. It meets our flow rate needs. These two sizes are all we need. You can find poly pipe at your local home improvement store, but don't be deceived, it's not equal. You need to look at the PSI rating on that pipe. A lot of that stuff is rated at 90, maybe 110 PSI. And you might think, well, my system's probably only gonna be 35 PSI or 40. If you have enough pressure and flow in the system and you shut it off fast, like a washing machine, you could get spikes of pressure in that system far in excess of 110 PSI and you could burst those pipes. When it comes to poly pipe, do not assume that all poly pipe is created equal. And like I mentioned earlier, think about whether you're going to be using copper sizing or iron sizing. Yeah, it's complicated. Now you're going to move on to fittings. They're interlinked, so you might choose your pipe only to realize later that you can't afford the fittings and you're gonna have to go back down the pipe path until you can find pipe and fittings together that you can afford. We decided to go with what I believe is SDR11. Yes, SDR11, iron pipe size, 200 PSI poly pipe. That's a mouthful. The reason we chose that pipe is it allowed us to use these poly fittings. These are called compression fittings. There's a barbed, section in here, the pipe slides in here, and by twisting this, you end up compressing and grabbing that pipe and forcing it to make a very good connection on this rubber gasket here. In the famous words of James from Tradesman Channel 2017, I'll link to his channel up here. Ask me how I know. I can demonstrate. I don't have to just explain. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. In case you were wondering if it sticks or not, the answer is yes. 
Okay, got it. So these are poly compression fittings. Um, if anybody's interested, the brand name is Ello Press. They're rated for 230 PSI. And as you can see, for a two inch pipe, they're pretty substantial. When you get down the fitting path, you're gonna have two basic options. You're gonna have plastic and probably brass in most cases. Now you can get a brass compression fitting that will do the same job, but you're going to expect to pay three to five times the amount of money for that fitting. These fittings are not interchangeable with brass. Odds are very good that if you're with a brass fitting system, the pipe is a very specific size to fit those fittings and you cannot switch them out for a poly fitting. Another reason that poly fittings are better if you're working on a budget is that you can usually find what I would probably call a compound fitting. So for example, this is a T. I can bring two inch in and out and then I can branch off with two inch in one fitting. To do this with brass, you would actually need several fittings. This fitting right here, I think was probably around 50 to $70. To do this with brass, you're probably looking at 350 to $400, and you have a lot more components. If you're thinking, oh, plastic fittings, no way, plastic fittings are low quality, garbage, junk. I want to share that this valve, which is called a street valve or a ball valve, and it's designed to be the primary valve in a system. This is actually serial numbered, this valve is, and it has a lifetime guarantee. So if this valve were to fail, we would follow up with the manufacturer and get this valve replaced. Of course, you're gonna be out the time and energy and money to replace it. For your primary water system, you know, go with something quality. This street valve has a square valve cap, and this is what you would actually use a long, very long wrench to reach down in to operate this valve. Keep that in mind when you're designing your system because so many people want to use valves that you would turn on and off by hand, but this valve is going to be somewhere around 12 feet down because that's the depth of our cisterns below ground level. So we'll have a very long wrench that's this shape that reaches down in here to operate this valve and turn on and off the whole system. I think we mentioned this earlier, but just in case we didn't, it's worth repeating. As you work on your schematic, you want to reduce the number of connections, and this is another advantage that polypipe has. You can get polypipe lengths 600, 900 feet without any connections. So all you're left with is your connection on your cistern side and your connection on your house side, and that's it, nothing in the middle. This box represents all of the fittings for our entire water system to the box. This doesn't include spigots and other ancillary lines. When you really work on your schematic, you should be able to get the fittings down to next to nothing. Assuming you're using a cistern system like we are, you're going to need bulkheads. This is the fitting that you actually put into the cistern where you can actually connect your plumbing thusly. The reason I'm pointing these out is it's very tempting to go cheap on the bulkheads. You can buy a bulkhead down at your local home improvement store that is very inferior in quality. And it might only be two or three dollars difference to buy a quality bulkhead. What you're looking at in this box is around $450 in connections. Once you start to budget for your connections, you're gonna realize why you want to keep them as minimal as possible, especially on your larger pipe sizes. If you're cool enough to have a lady like this one though, she gets a little bit excited when you push the order button on your plumbing. Mm, kind of. Cause hot showers. Mm, mm -hmm. Cause hot showers makes Alyssa motivated. Mm. These are hot shower parts. These are not plumbing parts, they're hot mm -hmm. shower parts. I like the song. When you get down to like a three quarter inch connection, you know, these connectors might be under $10, but one of these guys can be pushing $30 or even 40. And a valve like this, these guys are 150 bucks. For two inch, 200 PSI pipe, expect to pay about $1.25 per linear foot. Now, that's internet pricing, so you're going to have to factor in shipping. The more you buy from one company, the more you're gonna save because of shipping. Typically, they're gonna freight it to you because the pipe is gonna come in this gigantic coil, which we had to pick up from a local uh, shipping depot. 
And for three quarter pipe, expect to pay about 30 cents a linear foot. One inch pipe, about 50 cents a foot. So that's just our main water system, kind of down to the bottom of the hill. That, that's not everything. We've still got spigots and ancillary piping and things. We'll have to do another video on that because right now that's all buried out underneath the snow. So you're just getting started or you have other questions about all of our water system details, we've already created a series of videos. We'll link to it. It's a playlist. We'll put it up here that discusses our first off-grid water system, our temporary or intermediate water system, and then kind of the cistern system that we're working on right now. Well. That does it for this video. Hopefully you found some useful information. If you'd like, you can just hang out with me and watch our trench fall in. I would like to invite you all to have a moment of silence for a trench. Watching a car slide on ice and you know they're gonna crash, but you just have to stand there and watch them for like three minutes while they drag it out. Okay, okay no, go. It's going over the cabin. <laughs> <laughs> We're not actually gonna do that, guys. This stuff is too expensive! <laughs>